Welcome back to Boho Jewel. I'm Sandra. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for being a subscriber. Today is sort of an impromptu little video. This was actually something that I picked up a couple of weeks ago at Michael's and it is a watercolor painting kit. It is by Artist Loft. And I picked it up because I was trying to find some kits that I could share with you guys, like in the spirit of the holiday gift giving season, if you're looking for some fun gifts for creative crafty people. Um, I'm not really a watercolor person. Um, it's not that I just like doing watercolor. I just don't have a ton of experience with it. My paint of choice was always acrylics, and you know that's just what I, my go-to so this will be kind of fun from that perspective of someone who is not a watercolor queen to uh, play around and see how this goes and what's in it and if it would be a great gift it's about ten dollars I think it was like nine something and then plus tax of course so um, I will flip you guys around and we will open this up and take a look at it and see if it's something that you would enjoy doing or something that maybe you could give to somebody all right let's flip it around so let's see how we get this guy open. A little flap right at the top. So it says it has the watercolor palette in it. I believe it has a brush. Yep. Synthetic hair paint brush and 18 watercolor paints in a tray. So they had a few different ones. They had some animal ones as well. Um, but I chose the plants just because I like plants and I thought if I actually do all of these, Maybe one day, if I ever have a sunroom in my house, I imagine these might be a cute place to put them. <laughs> or they might be really fun to do, and I might hang them up and actually give the paintings to friends, right? Now, one thing, having said that, like, I think that would be fine, too. Like, you could do these and paint them and then find, like, a really inexpensive frame, maybe at a Dollar Tree or Dollar General or someplace. And a little cactus, how well those are showing up. And, um... And gift them to people, right? That one's a little hanging plant. And this one's kind of cute. I like this. It's got like the fern leaf and then the, the mushrooms underneath. So, the little hanging plant and the succulents and then the palm that's on top. So let's see what should we do. Let's let's do the little mushroom one. I'm feeling a little I'm feeling a little sassy. I'm feeling a little like painting the mushrooms today. Um, but that being said, if you are someone who is interested in selling art you cannot sell something like this because it's not your original artwork I just feel like I should put that out there you can gift it all day long but you cannot sell it oh that's actually a really cute little tray and that is probably just to keep stuff dry yeah so we're not gonna we're actually I'm gonna pause and throw this in the trash so my cat doesn't find it Alrighty, definitely don't want the pets and the little ones to find that so um, it's just a little packet in case you didn't see it. It's a little packet to keep everything dry during transit and in the store. So let's see, this is taped up. These are actually really cute. A little mini tray. Oh goodness, you guys, sneaky, trying to keep me from breaking into it. So when you are doing watercolors, usually, so this is like a little dry palette and the watercolors you'll find are dry. So they're sort of, um, like a little little mini colorful cake <laughs> a little in the pan and then the, these little empty pans you can mix your colors you just put a little color in there so you'll always need a little water and I just like to use this is an empty yogurt container kind of like to reuse things like that it doesn't have to be fancy it serves the purpose and let's check out this brush this is actually a pretty nice little brush okay well, I am kind of impressed. So when I was a kid, that's kind of, I guess, maybe where my art journey began. Um, you can keep the little plastic part if you want, slide it on there for later or throw it away. It's up to you how you store your brushes. Um, anyway, when I was a kid, I remember I had these little, um, I think they were like cartoon character coloring books and they were all watercolor, <laughs> right? And so, and it wasn't a paint my numbers either, but I remember that the long tray, they still have them for kids now. And uh, they were, you know, they were fun. They were fun at the time. So I'm going to check these paints out and see how these paints and this brush does. So the brush initially is very stiff. So just kind of play with it a little. And then I have a towel over here. I know it looks messy, but it's clean. It came out of the wash. Just an old towel that I like to use when I'm painting. So let me see how I can arrange this so you guys can see everything. So we're going to dip the brush pretty good into the water. 
kind of tap it off a little. And let's see, I'm going to start with the background just to kind of play around with the colors and see how they do. So I'm going to dip that in there. Put a little right here. So it's nice thick. So it's actually, it's not getting really, really liquidy, which I like personally. So I actually feel like I can scoop a little bit of this in here. Now guys, like I said, I am not the watercolor queen. It's been a while since I even used watercolors. I bought a whole set with the intention of playing around with them a little bit and then I just have not found the time. So I'm going to tell you right now, I'm actually fairly impressed with the quality of the paint. Like it's going on really nice and smoothly and it's a way thicker than I expected it to be. I don't know why. Maybe I was just remembering back to those kits from childhood and how cheap they were. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Oh yeah, I'm gonna clean my brush off a little bit and just kind of put a little water on top just to thin that out and sort of fade it down a bit. So now this is another option. So that's dipping the water into the paint directly. But you see how when you're, let's see, I'm gonna get you guys a little closer now so you can see what I'm actually doing. See how the paint is showing up. I'll get you guys over here. Um, and so that, that makes it slightly more opaque. Or, let me clean that brush off, just kind of wash it off, wipe it off on the towel. Or, you can add water to the paper. And I just picked yellow, I wasn't really having, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> just kind of, it was the first color on there. And then we're gonna dip it, just a little bit of the water in. And then I'm gonna dip, let's see, let's try this one right here and go over that spot where we added the water already. Just kind of loosen it up a little bit and kind of play. So that gives it kind of a nice soft effect. Just kind of play with it. So I actually do like the, the, the paints. So I didn't know too how secure they are in here, but they're not, they're not tipping out. So they're in there nice and secure and it's already drying back again, which is nice too. So there's not a ton of mess in there. Um, so they're actually really nice paints. So let's just kind of play around a little bit with a couple of the colors and see how the other colors pick up. I guess I could have actually done that on a piece of watercolor paper, but we're just going to play on here because why not? Because it's kind of fun, right? So I think, yeah, this is a great little starter kit if someone wants to start playing with watercolors. So let's see, let's Hmm, let's go ahead and just get into the screen and see what the screen is doing. Oh, I still had some yellow on there. That sounded kind of country, didn't it? Had some yellow on there. And that's okay, we'll have a little yellow green. So, that's kind of pulling up in there a little differently than the yellow. I'll tap that extra water. So I've got some water beating up on my brush. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm just going to go in and kind of fill in, see if you guys can see the top there, fill in a little bit. So yeah, I think, I think this would be a cute little kit to give somebody. I'm just going to hang out and paint this a little bit. If you guys want to hang out with me, I haven't done, done too many just because for creative sake things lately, a lot has been planned. <laughs> So I'm not filling it in completely all the way. The paint is on a little bit thick. So I'm gonna just fill in some general places. And one thing about watercolor too, I feel like it doesn't need to be very exact. Now if I were filling this in, I feel like that's kind of part of the niceness of it. But it dried really quickly too. So this is nice thick paper. That's the other thing I wanted to talk about. I was curious to see how the paper would hold up um and look at how far that's going just that little bit of paint i feel the camera wobbling let me study that it's because i have it clamped to the table and so as i'm moving even though i'm not moving a lot just pick up a little bit of that excess i may have to find a different place to put my camera holder there so it's drying almost kind of a yellow i'm gonna clean my brush up really good but look at that, I haven't even had to go back into the paint yet. That's kind of awesome. But yeah, I like kind of that um, 
soft feel that watercolor gets. And I think what I'm going to do is that part's staying a little darker. So as it, so you can kind of see that too, if you do buy one of these kits and you're, or you're just curious how in the world to use this, I will just sit here and play a little bit so you guys can see what happens. So, so right here is where it was the initial saturation of the green. And so you can kind of see how it's fading down. It's of course green is composed of yellow and blue, right? So some of that yellow is coming out. So I'm going to dip into my water just a little bit. And I'm really just dipping the tip in there. And I'm going to go into this. No, I'm going to go into this blue right here. And just give it a little bit of a swirl. Tap it off a little bit and see how it combines with that. And how it looks once it's dry. So you guys are, you know, if you're wanting to get into painting, I think this would be a good way to start. I think just something where there's already something on the paper for you. It's not a huge financial commitment for 10 bucks, right? And it's just a fun way to play, to start playing with mixing the colors and seeing what they're going to do. See how that works? Look at that. And this is what I do enjoy about watercolor. I don't know why I haven't played more with it. I think I just, I did so much acrylic. I'm going to dip back into that blue just a tiny little bit. I just, I did so much acrylic in college. I started with it in high school and then I used it so often in college. Um, a lot of drawing and stuff too, but I think it just, I got so um, comfortable with it. You know, I kind of know what it'll do and how it works without having to think about it too much. <laughs> so, you know, comfort zones and all that. So I'm going to clean my brush off a little bit. So let's see, let's um, play with that a little bit, um, but I want to check out some of these other colors. So let's move down here to these mushrooms and check out what some of these reds look like. So you see, and it dries fairly quickly. So yeah, I think this kind of became a video of just playing with you guys a little bit, and we'll just kind of play with some of the colors. So if you do decide to get one of these, um, so you see how the, so the blue, again, blue, yellow makes green. So how that blue kind of actually gave it a little bit of a shadow right there. So don't be afraid to play. So yeah, I highly recommend. I think if you're looking even if, whether for a gift or whether, um, make sure my brush is nice and clean or whether for yourself to kind of start playing around with some, some painting and some artsy things. Okay. This is like a little fuzzy mushroom, but this one reminds me of the ones in Germany, the little fairy tale ones. They're, um, oh my gosh, I can't even remember what they're called now. The red ones with the little white dots, they're very poisonous. So <laughs> they're magical, but they'll kill you. All right. So a little bit of water and we're going to dip into this red, this bright red right here. I want to see what this looks like. And I'm just giving it a nice little swirl. You can roll the brush around in it a bit to really saturate just the, the, the pointy little tip of the brush there. And I'm going to try to be a little more careful around those spots now. So it is, it goes on really. So what I like about this, and again, I'm not um, usually really close to the paper. So if you see my head pop in underneath the camera, <laughs> underneath the phone, um, what I'm liking about this, again, I don't have a lot of watercolor experience, so I don't know the standard for watercolors. But as an acrylic painter, I'm enjoying the fact that I have a little bit of control over this. So I just dipped in a little bit and it's not, it doesn't go straight to really, really watery. So for me personally, I like that because it's giving me a little sense of control. And you know, I think I just had an epiphany. I think that's kind of why I struggle with watercolors. Maybe that's why I like acrylics, because I feel like I'm in control of the medium, for the most part. <laughs> and I know what's going to happen. And with the watercolors, I think it just makes me nervous to think that it's just going to flood all over the paper. But I think this texture, if you guys can see it, if it shows up, it's got sort of a, a ripply texture on here. So it's like it's really soaking. It's nice and thick. So it's definitely, um, it's a nice medium to work on, I think, especially if you're a beginner. I think this is definitely a really fun kind of kit for beginners. 
or even for someone like me who just needs something to chill out with, apparently. This is kind of becoming my favorite new thing of the day right now. And I really am enjoying the brush. I'm kind of surprised at how, um, how well the brush is flowing, to be quite honest. So I'm going to just dip in a little bit of water and then I'm going to tap a little bit of that water off. I'm just kind of cleaning the brush um, so I don't get too much paint in there. And then I'm just going to dip just the tip in there and work some of this red around again just to give it a little dimension. Pick up some of that red from the top just to give it a little bit of that flow and that softness so it doesn't end up looking like gouache or acrylics because that's not what we're going for here around that but yeah it's really I'm really surprised that I'm getting around all these little corners with this brush so it's a really nice quality brush I have found in the past that sometimes when you buy these kits especially when they're a really good price like you know nine dollars and something that the brushes are really cheap and they're disappointing and then you're like oh my god I can't use this it's getting everywhere right and oh my gosh, if you guys are painters, oh, you know the struggle, right? When you are getting into those little fine details right there and all of a sudden there's a hair on the brush that's coming loose and it just, it goes where it's not supposed to go and the paint is going where it's not supposed to go. It's like golly infuriating, right? That calls for a drink for sure. And I'm also enjoying, um, I love the fact that there's like a good bit of paint in there. You guys can see that they're good um like that's I feel like it's filled all the way down in there this so there are these little blocks and they're all the way so this actually I feel like this is gonna definitely last beyond if I painted all four of these there's probably still gonna be some left over so yeah so you see what I did here I just took where I had it most saturated and I picked up a little bit with the water and just kind of work it down a little keep working it around there so it just gives it a little bit of dimension there you don't have to overthink this I'm not talking about figuring out where the shadows and the light and dark are right now but just to give it sort of some texture almost and you can see right here where the leaves have dried right we're not thinking too much I mean of course that does make sense where the shadows would be but just to kind of play just to give it um, a little I don't know a little warmth a little softness and that's that's one thing that is you see that's already dried from the last time which is great to me because I am messy and I have a kitten running around that likes to nose into things she's actually sleeping underneath my blanket right now <laughs> on my bed so she's she's not not causing shenanigans at the moment but it's only a matter of time so the less messy things can be sometimes, the better, I feel like. Okay, I'm going to do a little more of this red. Just kind of play with that in the corners here a little bit. And then we'll try a couple of the other colors. So you guys can see what they look like. I might actually just flip over one of these other pages. We'll see. Well, this is fun. And I definitely want to start doing some videos uh, with more of the visual arts kind of things. That is what I actually studied for and went to school for. And I'm starting to find that I have time again to pursue these things, which really makes me very happy. So you guys let me know. I know I have several different types of videos. I'm still going to be doing some jewelry making and things like that as well. But let me know what you'd be interested in seeing by the way of two-dimensional art, right? Like what kind of things you are curious to learn about. I thought it would be cool to do like a color mixing video with paints, you know, color theory, all of that kind of stuff too. So you guys let me know where your interests lie. I know I've been doing a lot of crochet videos because it's winter time and it just makes me want to do that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let this go for now. The other nice thing about watercolor that I'm going to show you, this kind of became a little mini let's play with watercolor video more than the kit, but clean that brush up a little bit, but you can always go back over. Let me show you up here in the corner. You can always go back over and resaturate, right? 
So you can't really necessarily fix a mistake or erase a mistake. I mean, maybe you can. Again, I'm not, that's not my, my medium of choice, but, um, but you can always go back in and saturate and resaturate and kind of lighten things up. So I'm going to come back to that in a little while. So let's see if we can get some interesting things happening here. And I don't know why, but I feel like that needs to be purple. So we've got like what looks like a dark kind of blue here, or that might be a purple. Can't figure out if that's the purple or that's the purple. I'm thinking, hmm, we'll see. Nope, that's definitely a blue. And this, yep, yeah, that's the purple. Very blue purple. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of water on there. I'm actually gonna thin it out in here and we're gonna do the stems of those little mushrooms. And then what I'll do is just a little demo of the colors for you guys, I think that would be fun. So I'm gonna brush the tip that off a little bit. Let's see if we can get into the camera and just really gently. And so I am really into this right now. Okay, I can't tell if that's a space or if that's a mushroom stem because my eyes are not what they used to be. Well, that was definitely a space, but we're going to fake it. <laughs> we're going to fake it. This is why I have to be super up close to, to my work when I'm working. <laughs> All right, get a little bit of that. And I don't like those little pulled up spots, so I'm just going to clean the water off of my brush and kind of soak some of that water back up with my brush. See that? So the brush is dry, so I'm just going to pick up some of that with the brush. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so that is that picture. I'll come back to working on that a little bit. I might even do a little video, like kind of a sped up video. So let me see. I'm just going to work on the back of this one, I think. Well, I don't know if it's going to let me work on the back. So the back is actually really smooth. Um, Let's see, this one's pretty simple. So I'm just gonna do the colors on here because I feel like I could maybe even make it work somehow. So we've already seen the yellow, but I'm just gonna kind of go down the row. I feel like I could make this really colorful background and make it more interesting. So why not? We'll just, we're just gonna play, right? You like how I went from just an experimental, oh, I don't usually do this kind of thing to like now I want to create cool designs with this, right? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna dip back into this yellow. So you have a, a demo of the yellow, okay? And so that's the yellow. And really I'm shocked because a lot of times with art mediums in general, uh, the yellows tend to be so transparent. And I think it's possible that the one underneath is a little bit more so, but I'm gonna go down the row. So this is kind of a burgundy red. Just heard my cat sneeze. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't loud enough to pick up on the on the phone, but I just heard it. It was really cute. Oh, so that's a really nice red. And then you can see once they dry as well, the difference in opacity and a little bit of the tone of the color possibly too. Which I don't know. The colors seem to be pretty, pretty saturated for watercolor. So I'm actually, like I said, really pleased with how these colors are working out. I'll clean that up a little better. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down the row. This is a green. I'm reviewing all these kits, it makes me uh, want to get into all these new mediums again. If you guys saw the embroidery kit that I did now I'm super into figuring out how to create my own embroidery designs. Oh, I really like that. That's a nice soft, soft color. So yeah, now I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I could make my own embroidery designs. I could do some really cool stuff. So that's the mind of an artist, always trying to think of what the next, the next thing could be, right? Oh, so the, the black is actually fairly transparent, but I think I added a lot of water on there. So let me just pick up a little more so you guys can get a good idea. Okay. So I am just going to go down the row and I'm going to fast forward this because I'm sure you're going to get bored just listening to me ramble on. So let's just do that.
There we go. So once we're done, let me show you my, I actually changed the water in between there to make sure it would be nice and clean. You just want to make sure your brush is clean. Just kind of twist it a little bit since it's a round brush. Make sure all that color's out and then just sort of reshape it a little bit. Get that nice point back to it so as it dries. So there you guys can see the colors. I had to move that one there because it was going to cross over the leaf. But you can see the colors are actually pretty true. Um, like they obviously look a lot darker in the tins. Just that's just kind of the nature of it. But I am really impressed by the saturation of the colors. I think they're really lovely. I think there's plenty of color options there to mix and create and do some really nice designs and patterns. So, um, I mean, not patterns, but just to create textures, to create nice vibrancy, to, to have a lot to play with. So I approve. I think it's a lot of fun. So again, you guys let me know if you'd like to see more of these kind of kits or if there are things that you would like to see me try. Um, like I said, I did get this at Michael's. It is the artist sloth. I'm not affiliated with Michael's, but I will try to see if I can find a link where you can order these. They're not on Amazon. I checked on Amazon already. Um, but yeah, I'll see if there, if there's, um, if there's a, a direct link to their website. If not, you can probably Google it and you'll see it's just artist sloth watercolor painting kits and they have other options as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for lots of other fun, crafty, creative, handmade videos. And I will see you guys soon. Take care.